I'm gonna expose a, a dumping ground or a murder ground. I'm exposing right now a CIA murder ground. It's by uh, the Nagatuck State Park. I'm calling the FBI's card on this one. If you actually have any people left in the FBI that actually want to do their job, I suggest now is the time to act. I basically uh, done most of the investigation here. The only thing you guys had to do is go dig up the bodies. So to give you some history of this area, it's called the Nagatuck State Park. And it's over by uh, the Peat Swamp Reservoir on Route 313. I'm going to give you directions how to get there from Route 8. So you could take uh, Interstate 95 or Interstate 84 in Connecticut to Route 8 and I'll give you specific directions, the directions I, that I know how to get there. At the end of this. But there's this huge area over there called the Nagatuck State Park and across 313 over here there's what's called the Metal Reservoir. It's a little tiny, looks like more like a pond, but it has a dam and a waterfall there. And, uh, and that leads from a larger reservoir, a much larger reservoir called the Peat Swamp Reservoir. And there's also hiking trails all around the Peat Swamp Reservoir. So uh, I first started hiking around the uh, Peat Swamp Reservoir. I wanted to go look at the water and I found a whole bunch of hiking trails back there. I think they'll prefer you to hike across uh, 313 where they have a sign that says Naugatuck State Park and then they have a little map there and they have a series of hiking trails. They're color coded and everything like that. I think that's the place they want you to hike because the hiking trails over by this reservoir aren't marked. And at one point, uh, some guy looked like a state worker. He pulled up with a blue truck and might have had uh, the city's uh, insignia on the door. And he said, you can't hike back there. So I just walked across the street and I started hiking in the regular hiking trails that day. Regardless, there's a bunch of hiking trails back there for somebody. So I was hiking around the Peat Swamp Reservoir and I come across what looks like a human bone sitting on the bank of the reservoir there. To me, it looked like a tibia which is the uh, bone that connects from the kneecap down toward the foot. It's the larger of the two bones in the human leg. So I called 911 and I said I found something that uh, you guys should come take a look at. So there's a small street called Haddon Road that runs around the Peat Swamp Reservoir. So I kind of waited up by the road and a, uh, I think it was an Ansonia cop pulled up with the Ansonia cop car. I have video of him, you can take a look. And what's interesting though is um, how he behaved. Now when I was walking along the bank of the reservoir and I noticed this human bone sitting there. So I kind of moved the bone into the brush next to a rock there. 
So if I went to go try to get this cop over there and I'd bring him all the way back there, it wouldn't disappear or something. So it seemed to be right there in plain sight on the bank of the reservoir, so I kind of moved it with my foot. So it wouldn't disappear. So I went up to the road, I walked to the end, saw that it was Hatted Road, called the cops, asked uh, for them to send an officer over. He showed up in like 10 or 15 minutes. And what was interesting is I walked him down through this little trail, uh, down to the uh, bank. And I said, uh, that's a stuffed animal that I found near the bone. He goes, yeah, where's the bone? And I said, it's over there. And I pointed to where I had kicked it. And instead of being really focused on what I told him I thought was a human bone, he turns around and he looks around the reservoir, uh, around the bank of the reservoir for a second or two to the place it originally was. Now that's odd behavior because if someone says, you know, I found a human bone down here, or what I think is a human bone, and it's right over here and points to it, a normal human response would be very focused walking to that area to take a look, to see what it is. But he turned around, looked the opposite way to where it originally was before I kicked it, up, kicked it off the uh, bank of the reservoir. And I noticed that. He glances at it. And instantaneously he goes, that's most likely a deer bone. So I quickly say, oh, well, that's a relief or something. And I said, I'm glad that you know your anatomy and physiology better than I do. And at that, I kind of cut off the camera and I walked away. I walked back up the uh, bank of the reservoir, up to the road, where I noticed two what looked like detectives sitting in an unmarked police car, kind of looking strangely at me. And I just ignored him and kept on walking. And the reason I did that is because I thought maybe it might be police protocol that if someone finds something like that, that they instantaneously say, no, that's just a deer bone to get the uh, witness out of there or to see the response of the witness. So to be honest with you, I was kind of relieved to hear that. But uh, I did take anatomy and physiology and that looked like a human tibia to me. But still, I took his word for it and I just quickly left the scene there thinking that it might be protocol. They say, get the witness out of here or, or I didn't want to be all weird, start arguing with the cop and everything. I was kind of uh, nervous about finding something like that. So I walked down Hatted Road to 313 and walked back to where my car was parked and I went home. So we got this bone here. Over here we got this. Up here is a stuffed animal. come across something like this you don't want to touch it put any fingerprints on it There's a the stuffed animal, sir. Yeah. Where's the other thing? Uh, the bone is over here, sir.
That most likely is a deer bone. It is? Yeah. Very good. I'm glad you take you you know A and P better than I do. So So I started thinking about that and I thought to myself, well, if that is a deer bone, then most likely they would have left it there. It wouldn't be a big deal. So I'm going to go back there and see if it's still there. So the next day I walked back there and sure enough, the bone was there. So I said to myself, I'm going to take this bone home and I'm going to uh, identify, you know, um, it doesn't look like a deer bone to me. Deers have very skinny legs and this looked like a kind of a large bone from uh, someone or something with a large leg. So I'm just said, I said to myself, I'm just going to go and identify what this bone is. So I brought the bone home and I tried to look up a lot of uh, different uh, skeletons on the internet and it really didn't look like any deer bone that I could identify. And it looked more like what I thought it was, which was a tibia. So basically I just put it in a bag and I just put it in a storage room. And when I was leaving that residence, a few months later in December, that bone was missing. Someone had purposely gone into the storage room and removed the bone from among my personal belongings for one reason or another. So that's some deer bone. So from uh, the end of September through October, November, up until basically it started to snow, I continued hiking around the reservoir and the Naugatuck State Park there. And basically, I got to know the area very well. I began hiking there when I first moved to that Derby apartment, which was the end of April, I found that place. And that was 2013. And I would hike there almost every day through the summer and into September where that incident happened with me finding that what I believe is a human tibia. So I did my thing, I called it in, talked to the cops. The cops weren't interested in it, the cops were acting funny, but hey, that's, that's my life. Everybody acts like a fucking weirdo, especially in Derby and in, and in Sonia, Connecticut. And I was trying to break out of there, so the cops don't care about it, what am I supposed to do? So that's why I need the FBI to step in concerning this because it gets a lot worse.